there's a lot of you here. Uh, I, my heart's beating so fast, I think you'd like charge an electric car or something. <laughs> okay, just a minute. Um, all right. Good morning and welcome, parents, friends, loved ones, faculty, and most importantly, class of 2021 to our graduation. My name is Iman Mazafarian, and I'm honored to stand before you today, not only as our valedictorian, but also as the senior with the best hair, according to our yearbook survey. <laughs> I'm also the senior who held the record for quarantining the most kids when I got COVID, so. <laughs> uh, but anyways, in all seriousness, class of 2021, first let's take a moment to acknowledge how blessed we are to be here. How blessed are we to have a graduation where we get to walk side by side in front of our people and in front of our sanctuary, all after a year of letdowns which have plagued us since last March. In all sincerity, thank you to our loyal school faculty, our church leaders, and most importantly, Jesus for this ceremony. Thank you. I want to begin by taking you back 12 years ago when my mother and I immigrated from Iran to California. So <laughs> I started first grade in Irvine, and I entered a completely foreign academic and cultural environment. And a couple of things were different here than in Iran. First off, school lunches had no rice, which was soul crushing, but also <laughs> no one hated Jimmy Carter with a passion here. <laughs> I think that's something only the parents are going to get, but <laughs> I'm still saying it. But anyways, uh, one day my teacher um, in first grade wanted to give us a lesson on irony. So uh, she asked our class if anyone knows what irony is, and my hand went up faster than Gavin Gildart's hand in AP Lit. And if you guys haven't seen Gavin raise his hand in AP Lit, I'm just going to tell you that it's like faster than Mach 3. It's, it's incredible. But anyways, I, I stood up, and I know what some of you guys are thinking. Uh, what does a first grader who just moved here from Iran know about irony? Let me assure you, that first grader actually knew nothing about irony. <laughs> I stood up and said, well, guys, actually, I'm, I'm ironic. I, I was... <laughs> I, said I, I said I was born in Iran, and I lived there for six years, and it was actually known as Persia before it was renamed Iran. I'm from Iran, I'm Iranian or ironic, same thing, right? No, um, I mistaked irony for the country I'm from, and that was probably the last time I ever raised my hand in that class again. <laughs> you could imagine the utter bafflement on my teacher's face. I know this is ridiculous and funny, but it really goes to show my state of isolation and how daunting it was to grow up in a new American school system where I constantly felt out of touch. My mom was told that year by a teacher, your son just isn't a natural learner. I took these words to heart. I took these words to heart, and I created an uninspiring view of myself all over those years, eventually following me and haunting me into high school. Every time I struggled, I asked myself, why can't I just understand these certain things? And I answered myself, well, Maybe my mind just isn't made for this. So me being here today is not an accomplishment of my own strength. I'm here today because of a faithful God, dedicated teachers, a hardworking father, and a praying mother who all inspired me to become the best version of myself, persevere through these last four years, dismantle every fear of failure and doubt of my ability. First, I thank Jesus for his faithfulness and shepherding my life. His grace brought me into this world when my mom was told that she was infertile and would never have a kid, protected me when my twin didn't make it through childbirth, brought me out of a coma when I was three years old, and was there faithfully through every pain he allowed into my life. So thanks is the only response I have to the undeserving grace of God that I have received. Mrs. Lynn, I told you that I wasn't meant for an AP class like yours, and I really believed it. I constantly doubted my ability since writing was so difficult to me and I learned English as a second language. You looked at me and you changed me when you told me you saw something in me. You told me that you saw potential and you forever changed me when you said that. 
and you knew that I could do it before I knew I could. So thank you for inspiring me to believe in myself. Dad, you've sacrificed more than enough to send my mom and I here to America. I've always seen your heart and I've loved you for who you are. I thank you for how hard you choose to work and I pray for blessings every day over your hands and mine. I love you, Dad. <sighs> Mom, one story explains the entirety of my thanks and admiration towards you. When I was learning how to write English, I had to transcribe passages from one paper to another with legible penmanship, and it was daunting and almost impossible to me as I failed to legibly write letters in addition to writing words that most of the time I didn't even know the meaning of. I remember looking at you once after I repeatedly failed to copy down passages with tears in my eyes, my hand hurting from the weight of holding a pen that I wasn't used to holding, crumpling my papers and begging you, Mom, please don't make me keep writing. I can't do this. I don't have it in me to write. With a painful look, you showcase the love only a mother can show and encourage me saying, Iman, you're going to keep trying, and I know that you don't think you can do it, but I know you can. I should have known I would get a little emotional. I cried during uh, Goodwill hunting. <laughs> so. <laughs> but as any mother knows, nothing hurts a mother more than seeing their child suffer. So thank you, because you knew what was best for me, and you had the courage to push me, even though I know it hurt you to do it. Thank you for raising me faithfully through the difficulties of single motherhood and for the sacrifices you've made. I'm the man that I am today because of you. So I mention all of this because I've been profoundly impacted by people, and I know firsthand the potential people have within them. I want us, the class of 2021, and us all as the body of Christ, to see the value of people and to live in a manner which finds value and purpose not in ourselves, but in what we can do for others. So I ask us to ask ourselves, what are we placing value and meaning in? Is it in jobs which society deems successful to you? Is it in your paper-thin political identities? Is it in this endless thirst for wealth that always ends with the phrase, if I just had this much more? This year decimated expectations and shook the cornerstones of our values. When the world falls apart and even our personal lives are disrupted, there's always people left. When the situations around us are dire and hopeless, we can always look to people to inspire meaningful change. I know it's hard to explain all this, so I thought that I would tell you my story and why I believe in people. Because I believe in people. People like Mrs. Carcutt, who will sit with you during their prep period just to talk to you and make sure that you're going to be okay. People like Gavin Gildart will open up to you and share their trials and pains without me even asking him to, just because he wanted to convince me that I'm not alone. People like Ryan Mann, who taught me that as a man, it's okay to cry sometimes, and who's helped me in every hour of the day before I even had to ask him for help. People like my mom's friends who've prayed for me daily since the start of the pandemic. That's 457 days of someone checking in on me and that's amazing. Every person here chose to value someone else other than themselves. And through that, they've inspired me. I used to believe I didn't have the ability within me to succeed so I didn't even wanna try at times. Because of people, I've, in, I've been inspired to become the person I am today on this stage. So thank you to each and every one of you for not giving up on me. So as we leave here today and either start our new journeys or for many of you to resume what you're already doing, reflect on the fact that you have been loved and impacted by people. It's no secret that our world is in need of meaningful change. 
not change like being the next Elon Musk, not just curing cancer, not just fixing our national debt. I'm not talking about that. The meaningful change that I'm talking about begins with us making the decision to put others first. The greatest area of influence is in the people around you. And you have the opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life the same way that people have made a difference in mine. So go, go out and be brave, class of 2021. Go out and seek the best way to change our world and start by valuing people and the difference that you can make in them. Thank you.